Hi guys. So a couple of weeks ago, we did a video about analyzing the UFO footage by the US Navy. And this got a very interesting reaction. Some of you were very positive about it. Some of you were really quite negative about it. Um, but some of the uh, comments that you gave were really very constructive. And so this is a follow-up video where we've refined some of the calculations that we did. And we're going to discuss a little bit more about how our results compare with all the other calculations that uh, other people have done. So um, firstly, I want to say actually that I think maybe a lot of you might have misunderstood the nature of our last video because the way that our video was structured last time, we started off talking about how we analyzed the UFO's position. So we actually followed the same kind of analysis that Mick West did. But what actually ends up happening in the course of the video is that we actually get numbers which are much larger in terms of the velocities of the object that we're looking at in the go fast video. What we actually did in the last video is not so much a debunking video of the UFO hypothesis, but really we were just straightforwardly doing a calculation and said, well, hey, actually we get something which doesn't really match up with what other people have done. So um, I hope people sort of got that point. And so what we're gonna do today is follow up on that. So we've got Sam here. So take it away, Sam. Okay. So in the previous video, we didn't include information from the banking angle of the jet, which can give us the trajectory of the plane. So in this equation, um, R is the radius, V is the velocity, G is the gravitational constant, and theta is the uh, bank angle of the jet. Yeah. So in the previous calculation, we we didn't really include this curvature angle. It was just sort of a parameter that we put into right. the calculation. But actually, you can calculate actually the trajectory that the jet is actually moving in because we have information of that from the bank angle of the plane, right? Right. Yeah. And the, the rest of the calculation is more or less the same um, because even in that previous calculation, we knew what these different vectors were. So. Uh, th those are pretty much unchanged. The, only the new in piece of information here is the actual arc, the arc trajectory. Yeah. yeah. So by calculating the trajectory of the jet using the banking angle, we found that the distance the UFO could have covered is about 584 meters. And that gives us a velocity of 95.66 kilometers per hour or 51.65 knots. Which is... Still kind of fast. Yeah. Very fast bird. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we talked about it last time, right? So there are birds that go up to 150 kilometers an hour, but, you know, does it look like a bird? And that's quite fast. So one of the commenters on our last video, uh, the Chala, sends these two models depicting the jet's trajectory. So in the top one, the velocity of the UFO is 57.62 knots or 106.71 kilometers per hour. And that agrees with our own result, although it's a bit higher. Um, the trial used a slightly different approach of assuming constant elevation of the UFO and a shorter time of 20 seconds. We used a time of uh, 22 seconds in our calculations. So we see some comments on our last video saying that the uh, range values may be uncertain. Well, we found that that was changing the RNG values can have a significant effect on the velocity of the UFO. So basically what we've just done here is that because these range values are uncertain, we've just sort of extended them all the way down to the ocean. Yeah. And so you say that the range value is uncertain, then it could be kind of anywhere on this line, right? So changing some values can result in a velocity of 40 kilometers per hour or 22 knots. So Mick West got something like 20 to 30 knots? 20 to 40 knots. 20 to 40 knots, okay, yeah. So in a sense, this would actually agree, but in order to make it agree, we'd have to choose the distances 
in such a way as to make it as small as possible. Right. His calculations are done using 19 seconds as the total time instead of 22 seconds. And his result for the distance the UFO could have traveled is much shorter than our own results. It's the uh, yellow line up there, about um, 300 meters. So with that, that's like 16 meters per second or 32 knots. Do you want to respond to some of the, to the comments in the video? I feel like I've been jumped by nerds in the alleyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's, yeah. that's uh, heartbreaking, but thank you. That, I thought that was genuinely funny, though. Yeah, it funny. <laughs> it's funny. Love these long oh, comments. This bird comment. Oh, no. You guys are speculating about if the flying object could be a bird. Why? We actually implied that it's unlikely that it's a bird, right? In the last video. There's one guy, which I'm looking for this one comment that said like, quantum physicists shouldn't be talking about <laughs> this kind of thing. He, he like drew a table and said that who knows about planes, pilots know about planes, who knows about angles, mathematicians know about angles. Who knows about you know weather meteorologists know about this and he drew a big table and he said where are the, the quantum <laughs> physicists do not appear anywhere in this table you know why are quantum physicists talking about this i think we can handle a couple of couple of vectors in fact this is actually more physics than than maths because in the end you you do have to use newton's laws and stuff like that so meters per hour yeah so so this is this is physics all right so that's all we have so if you enjoy the video then please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like the video and we'll see you next time where we'll analyze some other ufo videos bye